Hi, I'm Mike Cowell. I'm the director of the Business Innovation Zone. The Business Innovation Zone, or the Biz, was created to help high growth potential entrepreneurs and businesses in central Iowa. We provide a variety of services, including mentoring, consulting, counseling, validating business models, and help with access to funding for high growth companies. We offer also a number of networking opportunities, including luncheons uh, once a month and all day seminars on subjects such as marketing and finance. You can find out more about the biz at www.bizci.org. Thank you for the introduction, Mike. Thank you for having me. Um, obviously, I'm Justin. Um, just a quick note here. I'm, I'm using a, a presentation software called Prezi. Has anybody used Prezi before? Um, it's, it's a free online program where you can create presentations. Uh, really neat. It, there was a little bit of a learning curve. It took me a few hours to get used to it. Um, unfortunately, Prezi does not automatically save documents when you're working on them on your desktop. And so I went home last night, stuck my laptop in my computer bag, um, and I put it to sleep. Well, somehow it woke itself up in the middle of the night and drained the battery, and I must not have hit the save button when I was supposed to yesterday, so I recreated this from scratch this morning. So uh, if they're misspellings, uh, you can laugh and point at me and call me out. That's fine. I don't mind. Um, and, and also, I, I didn't realize until I got here, I, I should have shrunk some of my slides because um, the, the screen dimensions are a little different. So some things might be cut off, but hopefully you can kind of get the picture. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, and my company, by the way, is called Ecomagy. Uh, it's e-commerce strategy, online marketing. I work with small to mid-sized retailers, helping them uh, get online, enhance their online business. Uh, SEO is one component, uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about my philosophy on SEO um, coming up. But I'm a, I'm a Des Moines native. I grew up here. Um, obviously, my, my family is here, if you were here last month and, and heard my father speak. Um, went to the University of Iowa, have a marketing degree from the University of Iowa. Was very involved in a number of programs up there. When, when I went to school up there, online marketing and SEO was, I think, one part of one class. I think I had a direct marketing class that they touched on online marketing, and maybe there was a little bit in the book on email marketing, not much at all. Uh, now they have entire tracks of the business school dedicated to this. So myself and probably most people in this room, there, there really wasn't a formal education in this, and it's just kind of learning as you go. Um, after I, I graduated, I moved out to Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and, and had some fun for a couple years. Uh, I was a ski instructor out there. I always like to, to tell that just because it was you know, me going and doing something I'm really passionate about. Uh, and then worked about seven different jobs when I was out there too. Uh, but came back to Des Moines, started working at GNL Clothing, and I, I really started their online business from the ground up. When I started there, they were shipping out uh, during the holiday season maybe about a dozen packages a week. Our peak week during the holiday season a, a couple years ago, we did 2,700 packages a week. So significant growth there that we were able to create. I went from a, a one-man shop where it was literally me stuffed in the, uh, the back corner, um, doing all the customer service, updating the website, taking calls, shipping out orders to a staff of 10 people. So significant growth there um, at GNL. In addition to that, I'm, I'm also involved in a number of community organizations. I'm the chairman of the Des Moines Music Coalition. Um, has everybody heard of 8035? That's, that's our big thing that we do. Uh, I'm also involved with Central Iowa Shelter and Services, which is um, just about to build a new uh, $12.5 million facility down the street um, to serve the homelessness in Des Moines, so, uh, and then Ecomagy. So, um, SEO is search engine optimization. Uh, I always like to say that because SEO is a term that's thrown around a lot and people don't know what it is, so I'm not trying to, to dumb down anybody. I just like to, to make sure everybody knows what it is. Um, but, but search engine optimization is increasing your visibility through the major search engines, Google, Yahoo, and Bing, um, organically. And, and when I say organically, it's, it's the middle part of the page. Um, there's the top part of the page and the side of the page. Those are the paid listings. That's where Google makes their billions of dollars, and, and Bing and Yahoo are, are trying to make some money on it as well. But the middle part is all based on algorithms, and I'll get a little more into that. Uh, but in terms of SEO, I, I think that there's more to what you're doing online than SEO. I like, really like to think of it as online optimization, and so I'm gonna kind of shift the topic a little bit right off the bat to online optimization. And SEO is one component of that, but it's not the only component, and if you're just 
focused on SEO, I think you're really missing the entire picture there. Uh, me personally, I, I do SEO work, but I do it within the frame of, of online optimization. So, so online optimization, this is where I, where I look at uh, the, the formula. You've got your functionality of a website, you've got your findability, and you've got your aesthetics, and that's your online optimization. And, and I look at it in that order. Uh, now, now, a lot of companies look at it in reverse order, and, and particularly um, designers, and I, and I love designers, I, I don't do design work and I work with them, uh, but they're obviously focused on the aesthetics. Now, when I go in and talk to a company, I say, okay, that's great, but if you build a brand new retail store, um, let's say you're, you're building a, a brand new Walmart, and it's in the middle of northeast Iowa, and you've got cornfields and there's no one around, well, that's great. How are people going to find it? How are they going to get there? And same thing with the website. You need to make sure that it's findable. People can get there. Same thing with functionality. That's, you know, if you've got a brand new website, you want to make sure that the shopping cart works a certain way, that the menu is laid out a certain way. Um, if you go into a, 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 that brand new Walmart store and the checkout counter is in the back of the store and the help desk is buried behind the CD rack, that's really not going to be helpful for you. You're going to get frustrated and leave. Same thing with the website. You need to make sure that it's um, functional, findable, and then it is still important to make sure that it looks pleasing. Um, I'm, I'll hopefully show some examples later on of some really crappy looking websites uh, and what not to do when designing a website. So we've got those three factors. Really what I'm going to focus on most of the time today is, is the findability. So we've got our big three, Bing, Yahoo, and Google. Um, Bing and Yahoo actually are now kind of one search engine. I don't know how, how many people knew that, that Bing and Yahoo are showing the same results. Uh, it was announced last year. Um, Microsoft tried to buy Yahoo. Yahoo said no. Um, that was a whole thing, courtship, that, that was a couple years ago. Uh, but now they've um, created a search partnership. So the results you see are now delivered by Bing on Yahoo. Uh, but those two together, still a fairly small percentage of, of the market. Um, you're looking at maybe 20%, 25%. Uh, it, it, I've seen different figures, um, but it's small. Google is still the king. Um, and so Google is really where you need to be optimizing your search for. Um, Google itself has some tools that a lot of people don't take full advantage of that are free. Um, these are just a few of them. Um, they're webmaster tools. If you just go to Google and type in webmaster tools, it allows you to claim your site, see some very interesting statistics on your site. Um, and, and do some additional tracking. Uh, the Merchant Center is their shopping feed. They used to call it Frugal. That's a free shopping comparison engine. And by shopping comparison engine, I mean a site where you can see multiple products listed, pick which product is, is best for you. Uh, but that's a free uh, place where you can go and list your products. And everybody that is selling something online should have their items in the shopping Merchant Center. Um, they also provide additional analytics on how many people are clicking through. Another thing that has become more important in, in what you're doing for SEO is, is places. And this is your, your Google listing. This is basically what the Yellow Pages is now. Um, I was over at, at my, my girlfriend's place um, uh, earlier this week, and she had a stack of phone books by her front door in her condo building because no one took the phone books. Um, people don't really use phone books anymore. Uh, my grandmother does because she doesn't have a computer or a cell phone, but uh, that's where it's going. So Google Places, um, th these are what some of the listings look like. This is my listing for Ecomagy, and I apologize, it's kind of cut off there. Um, but you've got um, information that you can, you can put in there on, on what I do. Um, you can put pictures in there. You've got ratings, which is another key component there, so people can go and rate your business. All this shows up in, in your live listing um, and along with a map. Excuse me. On the back end of the Google uh, Places listing, more statistics. Um, you can keep multiple accounts or multiple businesses for a single account. This is a, a client of mine who has two stores in different cities. Um, and the, this will also show what terms people came through that listing on. Um, this is a, a map of uh, what driving directions that they're requesting. So it'll track if I'm living in West Des Moines and I'm trying to find the store downtown and I type in you know, how to get there, It'll track that for me. Uh, and then these are different requests that people are making of that Google listing. Uh, so definitely places is, is an important thing, and there's additional optimization you can do within that places listing. 
Um, the final thing with, with Google that I'll mention quickly is, is analytics. If you do not have a Google Analytics account set up for your website, do it right when you get back. There's no reason why you should not have it. Uh, they changed the analytics game a few years ago when they launched this, and, and it's free, absolutely free. There, previous to that, there were very expensive analytics programs. Um, so Google Analytics has definitely been a game changer. Great information you can pull out of there. Um, just a couple snaps of some snapshots of some information. Um, keyword tracking right here, so you can see which keywords people are clicking on. Um, total visitors. Um, the, uh, the information on uh, your demographics and, and what parts of the country people are coming from. Great information in there. Uh, I, I really won't go into the, the, all the specifics of what you can do, but um, I would suggest learning it. So Google. Um, beyond that, there are a number of other different uh, avenues for online marketing that, that I think play into SEO. Um, number one, shopping search. And this is what I re refer to as uh, the Google products feed, is a shopping search engine. These are some other ones that you can pay to be in. Uh, in addition to Google AdWords, which, is, which are the ads on the top and the side, these I, th I find are probably your next best bet for spending your online marketing dollars. Um, next tag, shopping.com, price grabber, shopzilla are probably the four biggest ones. Um, the find is another one that is also uh, very, very large. Uh, it's a free one. They're kind of developing their shopping comparison engine similar to what Google did. They're giving it away for free, and then they're going to put sponsored results that'll come up higher in the engine. Uh, I just read in an article that the find has, I think it's five, I want to get the figure right, I believe it's 500 million or 50 million um, products online from 500,000 stores. And what they do is they go out and crawl sites automatically, but you can go give them the information so it's correct. So that's another one that it's, it makes sense. Just go and do it. You can feed your product information to them for free. That way you're, you're getting the correct information in your listing. Uh, another place to definitely increase your visibility online um, are, are some of the platforms that allow you to sell on there. Obviously, you're not going to compete against some of these places, but you can sell on them. Amazon.com has, has had a marketplace store for an, a number of years. That's actually when I was at GNL. One of the first things I did is set them up on Amazon.com, which was a huge revenue driver for us. Um, but Buy.com, Walmart, Sears are, are all now doing that too. You can list your products on there. Uh, email is, is definitely a piece of that. Um, Constant Contact and MailChimp are, are two of the email services that, that are definitely um, up there and, uh, and worth checking out. Exact Target is another platform that I've used. Um, social media, and I, and I don't want to get too far into social media. That's a, another discussion for another time. Um, but there's definitely value to social media beyond the media itself. Uh, it, it's part of what you're doing from an SEO perspective. Google now has, um, somebody help me here, what, what is the feed called where they're showing the, the what's that? No, recent, recent it, yeah, I, I, I'm forgetting the name, but if you look on the left-hand side of your Google uh, search page, there's, it's like recent or something that, that shows you the most recent tweets or posts or feeds from these types of social media, so it's part of that SEO strategy now. Um, Google likes social media, so you should like social media. Uh, same thing with the coupon sites. Um, Google likes these. Um, Google tried to buy Groupon for $6 billion. Um, it, sidebar, um, I think that was one of the dumbest moves ever is not to sell Groupon for $6 billion. Um, but these are some other coupon sites. Um, Retail Me Not and Coupons.com are sites where you can go and post your coupons online. Definitely a way to get more people linking back into your site, driving more traffic to your site. Uh, and finally, I just wanted to briefly touch on some of the B2B options that are out there. Um, Business.com, um, ThomasNet, Kelly Search, um, what they call vertical search engines. So they're very focused on, on an industry. And uh, I used all of these when I was at GNL when we were doing some B2B stuff. So um, now back to SEO. We kind of touched on all these other parts of your online marketing strategy. But SEO, search engine optimization, let's look at a website. So this is ecomagy.com, my website. Um, you'll notice it's not super fancy. Um, it doesn't need to be super fancy. 
Uh, I just wanted an informational website that talked about my business that I can optimize for some keywords so people can find me. Excuse me. So, um, obviously, well, let's just do this. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting where I am because, it, as I said, I just recreated this this morning. Um, on-site SEO tips. I, I like to look at SEO as, as two different areas. You've got your on-site and your off-site. On-site, um, I did not stutter there. Content, content, content is the most important thing you can do with your website to increase your natural search rankings. And, and not just any content, relevant content. If you've got a site on, um, on selling flags, you need to have content about flags on your website. Google crawls that website and looks for that. And it needs to be uh, relevant. It needs to be something that is helpful for the consumer. You can't stuff keywords. Keyword stuffing is something that people used to do in the you know, late 90s where you would just put flags, 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 flags in little tiny text at the bottom of the page and match it the same color as the background so nobody could see it. Uh, Google's smarter than that. They will ban your website. Uh, so don't do that, but put information about flags. Um, in addition to the content, there's some other more technical things you can do. Alt tags are the, uh, are the tags behind an image. So Google or, or, ya or Yahoo or Bing can't read a picture. You need to tell them what that picture is. And so that's a tag that, that any developer can do for you, or you can go in and do it yourself, um, that talks about the picture. So if I've got flags on the website, I want to put um, a little alt tag behind that that says, you know, five foot American flag. So Google can tell what that picture is. Uh, that's something that a lot of people don't do that definitely helps. Uh, the H tags are something that's become more important. Those are formatting tags. Um, talk to your web developer about that and make sure that they've got those H tags. Um, more and more that I've read is Google is looking at those for how the page is structured. Um, an H1 tag is a header tag, so it, it's a header of a section. So Google can tell, all right, this section is about you know, about American flags, and then down in the text, there's text about American flags. Uh, another thing that comes up a lot is, is keyword density. How many times do I want to say American flags in that paragraph? If it sounds funny, then it's too many times. Uh, and, and that's kind of just a general rule of thumb. You can, in a you know, five to six sentence paragraph, you can maybe work a keyword in three times. If you have the keyword in every single sentence, that's going to sound really weird. Uh, and if it sounds really weird, Google thinks it's really weird. Internal linking is another thing uh, that will help you in your, your search engine optimization to ensure that people are getting to the correct page. If you have an American flags page and you have an Iowa flags page and somebody's searching for American flags but they end up on the Iowa flags page, well, they're just going to oh, uh, they're just going to leave. So the internal site linking will help direct people in the right, in the right way. Um, that involves using anchor text, which if I've got a page on my site that is about Iowa flags, I want to have a link to that, maybe on my home page. But that link won't just be click here. It will say Iowa flags. And that whole phrase, Iowa flags, is your anchor text. Uh, and that's, that's definitely key both on-site and off-site. Uh, the meta tags play a, a, a minor role, um, not near as important as they used to. That's some more information behind the scenes. Page title is still important in making sure that the title of the page relates to the content of the page and the keywords that you're trying to optimize there. So now we've got our offsite. And offsite, uh, again, I didn't stutter, it's links, links, and links. You want links coming into your website. Um, now, how do you get those links? That's the tricky part. It can't just be you going out and um, submitting it to every single blog and commenting on them. Well, because not all links are the same. Um, this is a little diagram I pulled off of Wikipedia that is trying to explain uh, Google's PageRank. Who here has heard of PageRank? OK, good. Um, so PageRank, this is some information about PageRank. I was actually going to put the whole algorithm they had there too, but that looked really long and boring, so I didn't. Uh, but PageRank is essentially saying a link is better if more links link to that link. 
and it's the whole interconnectivity of the website as this uh, of the internet as this as this shows. So if you get a link from an article from usatoday.com, that's going to be more important than a link from my website because I don't have that many links going into my website, but usatoday.com has a lot of links going in there. And so that's the whole page rank where bigger websites with more traffic are more important because they have more links coming into them. Um, now, one little wrench that, that Google threw in this a couple years ago is something called the nofollow tag. And if people heard of the nofollow tag? Um, the nofollow tag is a way that websites like usatoday.com or the Des Moines Register can ensure that they're not losing what some of their link juice is what they call it. Um, their importance by people spamming, let's say, their message boards or their comments on their blog section. So if, I, if I'm posting a, a comment on, on Des Moines Register.com, maybe about this presentation, they, they did a little write-up, which was nice. Uh, I could have gone on there and put, you know, thanks for, for doing this, uh, for, for checking out my presentation, um, for reporting on this. Here's a link back to my website. That's great. There's going to be a link back there. But, there, but the Des Moines Register automatically puts a nofollow tag, which tells Google, hey, that's a link, but don't pass on the importance to that website. Most blogs do this now. So you're not going to get a lot of benefit at, um, from just commenting on lots of blogs and forms. Now, there, I think there is still some benefit beyond the SEO um, just to drive traffic. So I think it's still important to do that. But from an SEO perspective, not quite as important. Um, so, links, links, and links. Where else can we get links? A few different places that I just wanted to mention. Um, number one is blogs. Uh, blogs are a great way to get links, and not you commenting on blogs, blogs commenting on you, writing articles about you. Um, you definitely want to find blogs that are relevant. If you just go out and contact 20 people that you know that have little blogs and about their life and you're trying to sell flags and they all link to you, it's not going to be that relevant in the eyes of Google. Google can tell what a blog's about, what your website about is about. Um, basically, Google is really, really smart if you haven't figured that out yet. Um, join the conversation is a great way to get involved in the blog. If you don't know a blogger, start commenting on their posts. Um, start responding to questions on the blog. Great way to get involved. Send free stuff. I have a client, an apparel client here in Des Moines, that uh, sent a free T-shirt to a local blogger. That blogger wrote an article about getting the free T-shirt and took some pictures about how excited I were. They saw like about a 400% increase in traffic that day from that blog because they sent a free T-shirt. Send free stuff to people, and they will write about you. People like free things, so great way to get people to write. Uh, and, and, and again, make sure that you, if you can, get them to have that anchor text in there. All right, so blogs. Uh, another great way is directories. Uh, directories have been out there since the beginning of the internet. They're not as important as they used to be. Uh, but this top one, uh, who's heard of the DMOZ? It's the open source project. Um, definitely important, definitely hard to get into. It's actually people that look through every single submission and determine whether you're worthy of being in their directory. Um, Google pulls a lot of their information from this because it's human edited. Uh, but because it's human edited, it can take a really long time to get in there. It can take months, years even. Uh, I think at GNL, I didn't get a, a link in there until I think the second year I was there, and then it was in the wrong category, and then it took like two years before I finally got the good links I wanted out of there. But it's definitely worth it. It's, it's, it's the top one. Um, Yahoo is another one. Um, I, I've read differing reports on Yahoo, whether it's as important as it used to be. Um, that's a paid link directory, so you have to pay to be in there. Um, as is, uh, I think so much is free, but you can pay. Um, and uh, BOTW is another one that um, is, is a good one. There are a number of directories you can find. Uh, How-to websites are great. Um, Ezine, go to articles are a couple of them. If, if you're, back to the flags, if you know how to make flags, show how to make flags. Show how to attach a flag to the flagpole. Uh, if you're um, 
in a, at one of my cl clothing clients right now, we're doing a how-to video on how to tie a tie and all the different ways to tie a tie. So somebody searching for those can find those. Um, but writing articles, uh, and that kind of leads to YouTube. And, and the value I see in YouTube are those how-to how videos. Uh, I'm now getting all my clients up on YouTube with videos that are, are relevant, um, that are viral, and that people will search for. So example, how to tie a tie, um, how to find a part number on this part. You're 10 times more likely to come up in a video result in, in YouTube than you would be in a text result in just the regular Google text. Definitely importance there. And from the SEO perspective, you can put all sorts of tagging information on, on the YouTube site in your videos. So you can tag them with words and, uh, and phrases related to your topic. Um, this is a, a company um, called Interdrive, or, or excuse me, Overdrive Interactive that put together this search marketing map. Uh, and, and I'm going to post this um, so everybody can find it. But if, if you want to get to it, just type in um, overdriveinteractive.com. These are all different online marketing channels. Uh, this is very valuable for a company to kind of see what's out there, where you can go with things. Um, they also do one for social media. Um, which is definitely tied back in there. Um, I, I think just using a lot of these techniques, I think one thing that's really important when, when looking at Google and some of the changes that have been made, uh, particularly in last year, uh, is local search plays a big, big role in things. And, and Mike gave that example of, of the knife sharpener that was down the street. It wasn't by accident and that, that Google showed him that result. Google knows where you are. Uh, it's kind of scary, but they do. And, and they show you results based on where you are. That's why the Google Places is so key, to get that set up correctly. So your business will show up higher in search results for your location. One of the things within the Google um, Places search result is you can set um, where you physically are. But if you're a service business, and let's say you don't want them coming to your location, um, you can check that and then put your service area so I can say my service area is 100 miles. And so that will affect search results within that service area. Uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword with the, uh, the Google Places taking more precedent. Uh, it helps local companies. Uh, it can also hurt national companies. So if I'm, you know, back to the flag company example, if I'm trying to sell Iowa flags, great, that's going to help me in the state of Iowa. But if I'm trying to sell California flags and my places is in Iowa, well, the company in California that sells California flags is probably going to have a little bit of a leg up on me. Um, now, that's not going to say that you're never going to show up there, but it definitely does affect the search results. Um, the other key is, is, is video. And, and video is so important. I can't stress that enough. Video and media. I didn't talk about images, but um, Flickr is another site where you can um, Put, uh, put images up related to your company. Um, definitely utilize that. So that's good as well. Those two uh, changes to the algorithms were made uh, late November, which started affecting things drastically. Now, this looks cool. This goes back to my, my little checklist of findability, functionality, and, and aesthetics. This looks really cool. Um, if I were going to be buying something right now, what are, you, what are you doing here? I mean, <laughs> there's a, a horse on a treadmill, and that, I mean, but this, don't do this for your website if you're trying to sell something, please. Um, maybe if this is like a separate little microsite that is generating traffic and is viral. I mean, to be honest with you, this is a site that use, gets used a lot in presentations about what not to do on a website. So it's gone viral and probably has a lot of traffic and a high page rank. <laughs> I really don't understand what they're selling. I mean, there's like coffee, there's this, there's that. This is another one that they probably have great traffic by now because everyone uses this for an example. But um, the thing that's good about this, though, is that they've got lots of text. From a functionality standpoint, not so good. Um, from a findability standpoint, is good. A a example that I'll show you that, that kind of mirrors this that's local is typing in the word track spikes. Who's the number one right there? Fitness sports. Everybody know what fitness sports is? It's better than it used to be. It's getting better than it used to be. It's like opening 
Right. I mean, it's this is yeah, this is this is their site, but they're the number one for track spikes, and and that's not just a local result. That's a national result. There, they haven't changed it in years. I mean, this is like a late '90s website because they rank so well, and and there is a component to how long you've had a website up that plays into the algorithm. There's a lot of text on this website, so I can you know scroll down, and there's you know all these different spikes that are talked about here. Um, and there's lots of links. Pretty much every road race in town links to this. Right, and then they've got all the road ring races that link to that. So it, it's bouncing the findability and the functionality. I mean, they've got awesome find, findability. The, the functionality here I don't think is that great, but it, I mean, this is one where I, I really don't, I wouldn't want to touch it because I'd be afraid that I'd screw up their number one ranking for track spikes, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah. I'll be around for a little bit, so feel free to uh, come up and talk to me, but thank you very much.